Hi guys, this is Ruben from Elementor, and in this video, I'll talk about your must-have shortcuts when you're using Studio One, whether to compose, edit audio, or even produce. Now, I come from a background of using Logic and also Cubase, and when I come to Studio One, Studio One is easy to use, but it, you need to modify some key shortcuts to make it easier and also essential when you're using them. So to change shortcuts, all you can do is you just go to Studio One right here, and under Keyboard Shortcuts, you're going to bring up the window right here. Okay? Now, as you can see, my keyboard mapping scheme is um, under Cubase, which is not quite accurate, actually, in fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and reset it to Studio One. All right, I'm going to reset this to Studio One and start all over from scratch. So you can follow me and see what you can do to, you, to your software. So the first shortcut I want to go through with you is Forward. Now, Forward brings the cursor up and down your transport, I mean, in your Arrange window. So we're going to search for Forward. And we're going to change forward to number plus, which is already here. Alright. Enter key. And what you do is just press your key, which is number plus. And I already have it here, so I do not have to assign it again. The next one you need to change is rewind. Alright. Now rewind is also set to number minus, which is right there already. So I do to change this again. And these are all set. Now I know some of you are using laptops which do not have the numpad uh, on the right, right? So you only have a small, smaller size keyboard. And what you can do is, I always do this when I'm using a laptop or notebook. So if you go to forward again, you can see that we have forward bar right here. Okay? Now, forward bar is selected to numpad with a shift key. So I do not want that and that's kind of uh, because you're using laptop, you don't have the numpad, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to enter key right here and you're going to select this symbol right here. Okay, just follow my keyboard and you get it right. This full stop symbol right here. And you're going to assign that to forward bar. Okay, now we're going to go to rewind bar as well. And basically push the comma sign. All right. So that's our rewind bar and forward bar assigned. So we're going to go OK and show you what it is first. So now if I press, if I hit on the plus numpad, you can see that my cursor scrolls like that, right? If I hit on the minus, it goes back simply like that, OK? Plus, minus. So now if you're on a notebook or laptop, when you click on the, when you hit on the comma button, you can see it goes back by bar, OK? And when you hit on the full stop button, it goes front. So I think this is a very easy way to scroll, quickly scroll through your events when you have them. Yeah, for example, if I have some events right here like that, you know, and, and this and that, you can quickly scroll them through like that, okay, using the left and right. All right, so for the next shortcut, we're going to go is, I'm going to talk about record shortcut. Now we're going to type if record. And you can see that we have a lot of record modes right here, okay? And the type of record I'm talking about, it's the record button itself. So when we hit this key, it starts recording, okay? Now you can see my transport is, uh, I'm sorry, my record button is, record function is assigned to numpad asterisk, the asterisk on my numpad, which is correct. And if you're on a laptop and you don't have the numpad, what you can do is you can put this and assign it to R, record, okay? I know the key is already assigned to track arm, but we're, going, we're not going to need that. This is not so important, all right? And I'm going to assign it to R. Like that. So when you're in Studio One and you decide to hit record, all you need to do is just press R and you record, just like that, all right? Or you can press asterisk and you start recording, just like that, all right? Okay? Now, let's talk about the next shortcut I'm going to go through with you. Now, the next shortcut is Zoom. Alright, Zoom, to zoom into your tracks. Now, I'm going to look for Zoom, and Zoom is Z, okay? Now, of course, Zoom would zoom up your track just like, like that. Let me show you. It's going to zoom in like that, okay? This is Zoom. But, there's also a way to also quickly maneuver this, um, events here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into zoom, zoom in, okay? Now zoom in, I'd rather change this to G, alright? So I'm going to enter key and assign G to it. 
Okay. So when I hit Z, G, it kind of zoom in. And then we're going to set one for zoom out as well. So you're going to go to zoom out. Okay. And instead of W, we're going to change it to H. Okay. So when I hit H, it kind of zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out. All right. Now we're going to go to the next one, which is mute. All right. Mute. You don't easily quickly mute your tracks. So what you can do is you can, I'd rather change from track mute to event mute. Now what's the difference? I'm going to show you this in a moment. Okay. So I'm going to change from this to up here. So I'm going to enter here and select on M and assign. So you can see that track mute is now disabled and it's now event mute. Now when you solo a track, you basically solo the track. You don't, you don't solo the events. Now what's, what happens if I have say a X, an extra region like that. Probably if I recorded three event regions like that, one, two, and three. And I only want to mute this one in the middle. What I can do is I can just click on that and quickly, well, press M and that's mute. Okay. I don't have to right click and search for mute and all that. So I just can quickly mute and unmute it just like that. Okay. So this is one way to simply get your events fast. Now, if you want to mute the whole track, just click on M which I feel is something I do not use as often as muting events. That's why we change the mute to events. Now we also have markers, which are we insert them using insert buttons on the keyboard. If you do not have one, uh, I don't think you need a shortcut for this as well. But let's, let's see if we have markers. Okay, and I'm going to scroll down and search for that marker. Right, we have here insert, which is set, selected to insert. And if you have a extended keyboard, this will be helpful to insert markers directly on the fly by pressing insert just like that. Okay. Now the next one is one go is automations. Now automations are something you fairly use a lot when it comes to orchestration and also electronic music, where you automate things around. Now to add an to open an a automation parameter, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select this to A. Okay, and it's easier to press A rather than to click around and open up this automation. So show or hide automation, I'm going to change this to A. So I'm going to show or hide, select key A and assign that. Okay, so when I come here, if I look at my automation, I'm just going to hit on A. Alright, I'm going to see what automation is this. Yeah, so just click automation and it goes there rather than you go and click there, right? So you automations. If you have a volume automation, you can basically look at it like that and close it just like that. Fast and easy, right? Okay, so that's a shortcut for you. Now the next one I'm gonna go through is uh, snap. Now when we move regions around, okay, I'm gonna unmute this. When we move regions around, say example for this region here, you can see that it snaps accordingly to the grids I have up here. And that's because my snap button is on. If I Turn this off, it's going to go smoothly like that. I can put anywhere I want, alright? But if I on snap again, it's going to follow the grids. If I select a... And if I select a different kind of uh, grid, I can go by seconds, samples, or even bars. And, you know, basically, I can choose whether they want to snap by bar, quantize, or frames, just like that, okay? So I can snap to bars right now. Now, you don't have to keep clicking up on the snap uh, snap to grid button right here when you're working around. For example, when you're moving some voice slightly, you don't need to snap to the bars, right? So if you want to do that, you need a shortcut to quickly change snap button. I know there's a shortcut here, which is N, but I'm going to change it to a different shortcut, which is J. So I'm going to go to snap. Oops, sorry. I'm going to go to snap. And you can see it's toggle snap is N. I'm going to change this to J. Okay, assign that to J. And when I click on J, this will be snap like that. So I can quickly change whether I want to snap things around or not, okay? Now the next thing I want to go through is also the auto scroll right here. Now the auto scroll is changed to F right here, but I'm going to change this to basically Alright, the auto scroll is fine. It's selected at F and um so F is the normal shortcut which I always use. So auto scroll meaning when you have a 
the cursor playing right here and it goes to the end it auto scrolls for you see that okay so to quickly off the auto scroll you can do this and when it goes out it just go on and play without scrolling it for you now this can be useful when you are scrolling up here and you're deciding to edit something right here without you know it stopping it right there okay so keep the auto scroll button as F F is correct all right and keep it there so you can quickly click select and off auto scroll on the fly now the last shortcut I want to go through with you is to group things around okay so let's say we have some um, some regions right here now we have two big regions right here and I'm going to copy and paste another region up here okay and basically I'm going to slice them select the knife tool and slice them into a few slices like that now for example if you have if you've displayed some tracks and you overlap them just like that let's say yeah you recorded a few takes and you have them overlap like that so to quickly merge them or group them up together what we normally do is we go into right click and we're going to merge events up okay but we don't have a shortcut with that so what we're going to do is i'm going to go into studio one keyboard shortcuts again and go into merge now merge is something i use a lot when it comes to composing and i have overlapping events and notes like that okay so i'm going to go to merge events and enter well this sign right here which is the equal sign okay assign that and I'm gonna go okay so what happens is now when I play something like that I'm gonna do this and quickly just merge them up like that okay so these are the few basic shortcuts which I always use um, in studio one to quickly go around navigate around and basically learn my way around okay so the other shortcuts would include uh, well like mixers piano roll and all that but that is we can use the defaults which is the F3, F2 and also um, F4 to off the inspector and all that okay so we're going to go through more of these shortcuts in a later video but if you are a premium member of Auto Mentor, what you can do now is you can go into the download section and get all the shortcuts now I leave some of the shortcuts right here but what I can do is I can go into Studio One and basically save export these shortcuts into a file okay i'm going to call this studio one must have shortcuts and basically if you are a premium member for the mentor what you can do is you can go to the download section and download this off and what you can do is simply go into keyboard shortcuts and basically load it up okay import what i've sent you download that and import it up and you have all my shortcuts which i selected here especially for you okay so I hope this video helped you and um, happy working in Studio One.